Hello everyone, I'm Thomas Wynn Railway and today feels like a great day to do another massive unboxing video. I'm not going to be looking at any wooden railway products in this video. I'm actually going to be looking at a new range of merchandise that I've never shown off on my channel before. So without further ado, let me remove my classic wooden Thomas and bring in a take and play Thomas. Yes, so uh, give me a moment folks. I'm going to explain what this is all about. If you notice by the title of the video, I'm going to be looking at the Trackmaster push along engines. And to show you guys that I'm not messing around, I got one of them right here. In total, when this video is all said and done, we are going to have unboxed more than 30 of these new Trackmaster push along engines. But before we get around to that, just very briefly, I want to talk about the history of this range again, just very, very quick. This is a take and play Thomas. Um, growing up with Wooden Railway, I never had any of these die cast, what I would call the portable range of Thomas merchandise. Um, however, in recent years with the decline of Thomas Wooden Railway and a lot of Mattel's merchandise has gone through changes, I thought it'd be fun to kind of take a look at this and show off how this has changed over the past couple of years. So take and play Thomas looks something like this for a really long time, classic shape, big cab, very nice face. Then around 2014 or 2015, we got this. It was a departure to what Thomas had looked like in the past. I have one of these new unboxes that I'm gonna open up. In fact, I got this at Toys R Us um, when they were getting rid of all of the take and play merchandise around 2017 or so. So I just talked about we were doing a, a Trackmaster push along unboxing video, but here's a take and play unboxing part as well. So as you can see, Thomas looks really different. Big fat magnet squash cab his dimensions are starting to look a little bit wonky then I've documented on this channel before that I also collect the adventures line which replaced take and play the dimensions are pretty much the same but we don't have the big fat magnet on there anymore and the adventures didn't last for super long and all of a sudden we are given this you can't see the logo. Oh, you can't see right there. It's Trackmaster Push Along. So that's where we are today. I'm actually going to start off with this big 10 piece pack right here. And I guess without further ado, guys, let's get started. So actually, let me hold it up like this and show off what this box looks like. This is actually very impressive. So throughout the course of this unboxing video, I'm going to talk about kind of my feelings about this type of merchandise. Honestly, I'm split. Um, there are some pros, there are some definite cons, but overall, um, I'm, I'll kind of reveal my opinion when it's all said and done, but this massive pack, this Sodor Steamies pack, is a great way to get a lot of your classic starter characters for the Thomas and Friends. I guess this is the push-along range, technically. So, I don't have a knife on me. We're gonna tear this off as awkwardly as I can. But like I was saying, when this is all said and done, I'm going to have unboxed 30 of these push-along engines, pretty much all of the major releases that uh, made it into stores in uh, the late part of maybe 2018. I can't remember when this exactly was released, but pretty much all of the major releases in 2019 I have in my possession. Um, all right, so this, I wanted to start off with the big one here because as you guys can tell, this is really, really cool. Um, regardless of how you think the engines look, it's kind of cool to get all of your main characters in one big shot right here. And I, I remember most of the prices that I paid for these. So this actually came from Amazon. A lot of these actually came from Amazon. It came on Black Friday, 2019, and this 10 piece pack was selling for like $17. Considering it normally sells for like 35, I thought that was a great deal and that actually kind of sparked my interest in collecting these because the price was just too good to pass up. So I just showed off what time Thomas has gone or what Thomas has transformed into over the past couple of years. People love what has happened to the portable range of Thomas toys. People hate it. Uh, like I said, I'm kind of down the middle, honestly. Um, there are some good things and there are some bad things. But anyway, I'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Let's get started with this unboxing video and take a look at Push Along Thomas. Now, fun fact. This is actually not the first 
push along item that I have in my possession. I did a massive unboxing video of Adventures engines a while back, and at the very end of that video, I snuck in um, an unboxing of a push along Rajiv. So this was the first push along engine that I had. I'm not a big fan of this one. I just don't think he looks anything like he does in the TV series. Um, but I was a big fan of how we have a wide wheelbase and these guys can fit on not only wooden railway track, but they can obviously fit on Trackmaster track, which I thought was really cool. So again, Thomas is suffering from his, uh, his squash cap. He has a whistle back there, but you could hardly tell it's there. It's not painted. Um, the major change, the two major changes between this and Adventures, it's hard to believe we're talking uh, like in past tense with Adventures because they were, they were not a lo around for a very long time. The biggest change here is we've gone away from these plastic couplers at the front here that can spin and turn, and we've kind of gone on what I would call like a, a hook coupling. It's very similar to what you would would see with like the Lego Duplo Thomas engines. I want to say that's the range. But what's interesting is this hook coupling is only on the front here and then we just kind of have what I would call a receiving end on the back. There's no dual way connector here. You could potentially pair up um, an Adventures Thomas facing like an Adventures Edward. You just move the couplings and all that. With uh, this range of merchandise that's not the case. We're back to kind of a uniform singular way of presenting our engines front to back. So Thomas has some big wheels. His wheels have increased in size from the previous generation. Um, he looks a little bit more boxy than last time. I'd say he's lost a lot of his shape. I have come along and painted the buffers on my Adventures Thomas. So try to imagine if that's not there. But the face looks identical. The funnel's about the same size. The major difference, however, is that the wheels are bigger. And then we take a look underneath. Look at the size difference here. So I think what I will, I'll kind of let you guys in on a little secret. Like I said, I'm torn on these um, push along engines and rolling stock because I, I think we're just getting to the point where the merchandise has looked bad for a long time, but we're kind of taking it to new heights all of a sudden. So this, this does not look like Thomas, in my opinion. I'd say he's way too stocky. He has all this, you know, extra space at the back here that doesn't need to be there. Thomas was still kind of shrunk down in his adventures form, but his proportions were a little bit more accurate, and we've kind of gone away with that. The good news is, is that this hook coupling should be able to couple to adventures. There we go. So if you have adventures items or uh, engines or anything like that, they will work with this. But the major, I think the major selling factors he, factor here is not only are they compatible with the Trackmaster engines, but they can finally run on Trackmaster track. I think that's a big thing. So Thomas here, I've seen better, but I'll keep an open mind as we move on. Uh, let's pull out Percy. Percy's in the back here. Like I said, I got this off of Amazon on Black Friday 2019, and when it came down to it, it was a dollar and 70 cents for each of these engines. So, depending on how I liked them, you know, it was like, okay, I'll, I'll just kind of buy this starter pack and see how I feel. And if I end up hating them, well, I only spent 17 bucks on all of them. And if I like them, well, I got a really, really good deal. So, this is Percy. One thing you're gonna notice with all these push-along engines is they all have these gigantic wheels. In the past, like some of the smaller engines, like Luke, they had um, they had smaller wheels to kind of indicate there was like a size difference here and there, but we've gone to a very, uh, just a symmetrical way of portraying these engines. So Percy here isn't looking too bad. Maybe he doesn't suffer as badly as Thomas does in his new wheel design. I have a lot of Adventures engines, <laughs> and so, um, I thought since we're taking the time to do this comparison, ooh, that's a tight fit. I don't know if I want to press on that. Oh, okay. Well, it's snug as you can tell, but look at the wheel size. Look at the difference there. Percy also seems a fair bit longer. Um, his stripes are uh, off on this uh, left side here. You see that? They kind of, they cut off right there. That's really interesting. I wouldn't really, I mean, I wouldn't go as far to say that's like a factory error or anything because I think ooh, I think that gets tossed around too much um, but just kind of a mistake I guess face wise what are we looking at oh yeah pretty much the same but we have that hook coupling in the front underneath yeah much wider and sideways yeah you kind of, you kind of see how I struggled to get this together and then it slid off really easily 
Um, I would much rather this connection right here feels a lot more secure in my opinion. So there we go. That's Adventures Percy and Push Along Percy. Uh, I'm not expecting too big of a difference between the Adventures engines and their uh, Push Along counterparts, but I do want to take the time to display all of them and show you guys how they look and everything. Percy, I don't know, I am extremely split on how these push along engines work, but I think I think we can all agree that the, the tank engines, the smaller engines, look better than the tender engines, and we will get to the tender engines here in a sec. So Percy, yeah, the, the, the I don't know. I, I'm not ready to really make a, a call on that one. Let's jump up here. I think one of the oddest inclusions in this pack the pack is called Sodor Steamies, but we get Victor here. And Victor is always tossed around with these major, you know, big players in the Thomas franchise, and I really don't consider him to be a big player. But nonetheless, he's still included all the time. So here's Victor. Um, what's so funny is he gets painted buffers, and that's exactly how it was on his Adventures model as well. Well, only in the front, and he has a big gap in the back there too. So I don't know why Victor is always included. I think he's a cool character, but I don't know why he gets the, the special treatment. I got uh, Adventures Victor here. This is where we start to see the uh, the small wheels. Look at that. So in the past, Victor got these small wheels, and granted, he did look a little funny this way, um, but we've replaced those small wheels. He has four wheels total, but we've replaced them with these big ones, and they're in different spots than last time. But look at the size difference. That's huge right there. That really tells the story of what we're dealing with. I think any... Um, concept or perception of size has completely gone away with the push along range. They are just they're just making all the engines one size now. I mean, Victor looks Victor looks bigger than Thomas. Honestly, he's a lot stockier. So that's what we're dealing with here. Um, the details are all there. They've just kind of been worked around, and I mean, you can see how much how much shorter. Um, push along Victor as well. So Victor definitely suffers here. Man, it just, it's such a shame. It seems as though every time we go through a new round of Thomas merchandise, the characters lose more and more of their individuality and they start to look increasingly more like these just generic kids toys that Thomas used to not be, uh, uh, be about. I used to love Thomas toys because they were unique they were interesting, they were unlike anything out there, and in recent years it seems as though Mattel and Fisher-Price have really prided themselves and they've really been focusing on making these engines and characters like everything else out there. So I really struggled to like these, uh, these tender engines in the push-along range, I really do. I don't, I'm not a big fan, I think this, the gaps in the wheels here are just way too big for my liking. There's all this kind of dead space in the middle there, and James just looks funky. I mean, look how long that is. It's just not natural. Um, his tender here is very disappointing right off the bat, if I can pull the part. Super lightweight, all plastic. Um, it, it looks like there's some chipping on the top here, which I don't know how that's possible. This came new in box, supposedly. Again, super lightweight. I mean, um, gosh, let me pull out Adventures James. So Adventures James here, I feel like the, uh, the proportions are a lot better off. The wheels are closer. He doesn't look as, as funky. Um, still not perfect by any means, but the tender was still metal, and it still had some weight to it. Um, but here, wow, this is this is really disappointing. This is so lightweight, uh, a small breeze could come up and just pick this thing up. So the, uh, the coupling system is extremely hard as well. That's another thing I've noticed. And it may be hard to tell on my camera here, but the top part of James's tender where the five is, is actually a different shade of red than the rest of his body. That's really annoying. Um, not impressed with James, and I don't think I'll be very impressed with a lot of the bigger engines. I think, like I said, the tank engines are going to um, do a lot, are going to fare a lot better in this pole than the tender engines. But yeah, this doesn't look like James to me. This is seems really long and drawn out. Um, I put, I'll put Adventures James. I'll try to line them up as best as I can. As you can see, increased in size. Which is interesting because like Victor, for example, who was a tank engine, he decreased in size. So the proportions are just whack. They're, they're all over the place. I don't really know what to think. 
Um, <laughs> the beautiful thing, and I want to mention this right away, possibly one of the greatest mistakes in all of Thomas merchandising, the buffers on the tenders for all of these engines, I believe, are on the wrong way. And I cannot believe that happened. I mean, it, how... <sighs> This, I guess this is where we are in 2020 with the merchandise. But anyway, that's James. Not very impressed with him. And I don't think I'll be very impressed with a lot of these guys. Let's pull out um, Emily. So this Sodor Steamies pack is pretty much the steam team in push-along form. All of these engines are sold um, separately. Um, but it's so much easier if you're trying to collect them all or do like a massive unboxing video like I'm doing here. It's much easier just to get them all in kind of a value pack setting. So again, we are dealing with all the same wheel size. We have these big gaps right here. Emily's face looks, uh, looks pretty good, but everything else, I mean, to me, when I look at Emily, I and mean, even when I was looking at James, the main body here seems so stretched out and elongated, and then the tender seems so short and concise. And I think that has to do with the wheel placement. Um, it, it is just a shame, because it's like, if you would just find the middle area between these two and not make Emily super long, and not make her tender super short, I think there, was, there could be some potential there. Uh, I got Adventures Emily right here. Oh yeah, that's another big thing, is her big middle wheel is missing. <laughs> So I know there were a lot of gripes about the Adventures line. A lot of, you know, a lot of the criticism was well-founded. There were a lot of things wrong with Adventures. Um, I think the only thing that Push Along really has going for it right now is that it can run on Trackmaster track, whereas Adventures engines, you, you couldn't really, they had to have their own track system and that track was not readily available and the line was only out for like a year and a half. So you couldn't even collect it if you wanted to. So. Um, I'll say it now and I'll say it again. These Adventures engines, they just, you know, just size-wise, they just look a lot better. And it obviously helps. I mean, look with Emily here. We got three different wheel sizes. And you take that away and you give all the wheels the same size. Emily is probably one of the worst-looking um, Adventure, or excuse me, uh, push-along engines um, in this line. Definitely that we've looked at so far. She's way too long up here. The tender's way too short. Um for being supposedly metal, die cast metal, this whole bottom part is plastic. I, I don't, I'm not really buying any of the advertising they're trying to, to push on us here. So that's Emily. I guess I'll bring in one of the new characters. Here's Nia. Um, I do have an Adventures Nia, which I will pull out right now. Here we go. Okay, so right off the bat, Push Along Nia is shorter looks to be the same height but as you can see in this area where the dome is we've definitely <laughs> um there have been some reductions there considering nia is way bigger than thomas um yeah this the sizing on these is really really bad um a common complaint with the adventures engines is that they shrunk them down and then they added like these fake wheels off to the side to kind of remind you oh nia is a really long engine well here We've just totally gone away with that. I think in kind of a cute way, Nia looks all right. Like it's a nice little fun size, but it, it's something is still really, really off about these trains. Uh, Face-wise, it's about, it might even be the same size, probably the same mold even, but um, I'd say considering Nia is long and she's wide, this uh, <laughs> this push along version isn't gonna cut it. I mean, it's it's a nice little. I mean, this would be like a perfect like birthday cake topper type of engine, but we there is a lot of detail missing here, um, which is really really unfortunate. So um, I don't think I've ever seen Nia sold individually in stores as of right now. I think I only saw her in this pack. I mean, she wasn't one of the major reasons why I picked that up, but I just wanted to mention it. So there's Nia. Again, she's longer than Thomas. And we're looking at the same size right here. Man, considering how tall Nia's cab is compared to like where Thomas's should be, Thomas looks really, really awful. That's, that's such a shame. I, I think one of the worst things they did is they went away from this style where Thomas looks so good and so uniform. Like, of course it wasn't accurate, but it looked good. And just like the scale of everything was really, really nice. And then in this next version where we have these big fat dumb magnets, they took the cab down and it just hasn't recovered since. So I don't get why they can give Nia such a huge cab here and not do the same to Thomas. I think it would improve Thomas's appearance greatly, but 
Man, knee is a bit of an interesting one. I mean, obviously, I think it's uh, I think it's a downgrade looks wise from the Adventures one. But then, like I said, in a cute sort of way, Nia doesn't look too bad. So anyway, I'm kind of split on that. You know, let's take a look at the most useless, <laughs> by far the most useless push-along variant I've ever seen. Uh, there was a version of Harold back in this day that I remember seeing on Toys R Us shelves. Then there was Adventures Harold. Now we have Push Along Harold, and there is nothing here that indicates this Harold is any different than the one seen in the past. I guarantee you it's the same mold, and they just keep repurposing it. And worst of all, I see Harold being sold by himself all the time um, at Target and Walmart, and it's such a shame. So Harold is an absolute waste here. Um, I think Harold's cool. But he shouldn't be included in like a starter pack like this. Harold is not that important. So, uh, yeah, let's let's move on from Harold right there. That was, I, I I am very. That's a whole nother video topic I could talk about. Is Harold's inclusion in the portable range in recent years and how Mattel is so certain on shoving him down our throats when we clearly do not want him. So in a weird way, even though this is titled Sodor Steamies, this pack was titled Sodor Steamies, we get Harold and Kevin. I think Kevin is a very strange inclusion here. Wow, this is a horrible version of Kevin, if I may say so myself. His uh, crane arm can't do anything. I'm used to the wooden railway one where it comes all the way down. Adventures here, a little bit more room, but look at the size difference. This is, this is pretty major right here. So a lot of the same details have come over, but Kevin has, has certainly grown <laughs> uh, in the past. Um, out of all the Adventures engines, Kevin's not the greatest, but like I said, out of all the Adventures engines, um, you know, it could be a lot worse. Push along Kevin here, this is interesting. He, he is really wide because he's got to fit on that track, so his, uh, his proportions are way out of whack. This is useless right here. I mean, this... I, I, you can barely move this. What is even the point of making this move if it moves like a centimeter or two? Um, if I bring in like a push along engine, is it supposed to, I guess that's what you're supposed to do. But again, you can't do much. Um, with an adventures engine, let me see, I got adventures Percy here. We could potentially flip that to the side. Oh, well, maybe. It's just at a weird height, and it doesn't really clip on either. So, um, yeah, this, considering, you know, what Kevin is supposed to be uh, like size-wise, this is not looking too good here. Um, <laughs> he looked, he didn't look too bad in the box, but, man, when you when you get him out of the, the box here, this is not bad. I am so disappointed in this. This is an absolute useless feature. I'm not saying they shouldn't have made this movable, because having it stoic like this doesn't do anything. But then they, they bothered to give him a coupling as well. So really disappointed in Kevin. That That is just not good. Uh, maybe I have something nice to say about Gordon. Probably not. So Gordon here, um, let's see. I mean, you know, in the past, he has been a longer engine than like James or Emily, for example, that we've previously looked at. So I think his proportions above the wheels aren't looking too bad. Again, these wheels, however, are just terrible. Um, I got, here is Adventures Gordon. It's so interesting size-wise, I sorry, I keep hitting the camera. Size-wise, not too big of a difference, honestly. Um, push along Gordon's definitely bigger. The tender's a lot bigger. I still, I mean, and we all we all gripe about this wheel configuration for the Adventures engines, but I honestly think it, it looks way more natural than this. Gordon definitely has a bigger face, though. That's super interesting. Um, yeah, this is, ooh. Again, plastic, cheap tender here. This is kind of an insult. I mean, you pay for a die-cast metal engine, and the second half of it isn't metal. So that's that's really disappointing. I mean, this is, like I said, so lightweight. These engines, they I cannot get over this wheel configuration, though, and I think that's really going to hurt my opinion of the push-along range with these larger tender engines, honestly. Um, people in the past, it seems as though, like, the, the, biggest, the biggest complaint with the push-along range is that it's not kind of like people's breaking points. Like, they have finally had it with Mattel's merchandise. They could put up with this, and to an extent, they could put up with uh, Adventures Thomas right here. 
but then for some reason this is the this is the uh, the change that has everybody up in arms and I well I understand it I also feel like there were a lot more radical changes in the merchandise between here and here than between this and that so I'm kind of it kind of puzzles me when people have finally decided they've had enough when I do believe, I think one of the major reasons why Push Along was introduced, it was to, to help right a lot of Adventure's problems. But then the problem is, is that Push Along has its own problems that Mattel really didn't think about until they released it. And now we just have toys with a lot of problems. So I actually really like Gordon's face. And like I said, I, he doesn't suffer as badly as some of the other Push Along engines in the looks department but it, it's still not that great. And let me mention, those buffers are on the wrong side of the tender there. So let's take a look at our last engine in this kind of mega pack. Remember I paid $17 for this whole thing. Rebecca has been fairly popular um, in the push along range from what I can tell. I remember only seeing her in stores a couple of times. And I think this is kind of people's way of testing this range out. It's like they don't they don't want to go out and buy like a character like Gordon or James or something or Emily. Um, if they're going to go out and buy a push along engine, they're going to buy a new one. Remember, we never got an Adventures Rebecca. So Rebecca, I feel like Rebecca's shape is actually really, really well done. Stocky in some areas. Uh, when I talk about her shape, I'm not talking about the wheels because we all know that's a, a major misfire. This tender, again, all plastic, super lightweight, but I feel like it has a fair amount of detail on it that the other tenders do not. Um, I have to say, I, I kind of like this one. Again, lots of problems here, but I'm not immediately uh, revolted like I have been in the with the past couple of engines that I've looked at. So this is okay, and like I said, I don't really have anything to compare Rebecca to. I mean, I have a, a wood Rebecca, but we're kind of dealing with you know the same wheels and everything like that. So the Rebecca, out of all the engines I've taken a look at in that pack, I'd say Rebecca, surprisingly, and I can't believe I was saying that, surprisingly, I think Rebecca and Nia are the best looking ones. And by best looking, I do not mean accurate. I do not mean they're in the running for the best um, type of merchandise of all time or anything like that. I'm simply talking about just how they look in their forms. I think Nia really looks great because of her big cab. You know, her proportions are somewhat accurate. You take Thomas, Thomas is really suffering here. So I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I feel like the best two push-along engines that we've looked at so far in this video are, are these two right there. And I, once again, I can't believe I'm saying that. So again, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, like I'll leave my full opinion until the end of the video. But for $17, that was a really nice taste into the push-along range. I will admit, if I didn't have all of these other push-along engines sitting off to the side ready to go, I don't think I would be going out and buying more of these, but I have some more engines uh, ready to look at. Let me take Rebecca off to the side and adjust the camera, and we'll get right back to it. So two of the major engines that were missing from that Sodor Steamy 10-pack were Edward and Henry. And it's kind of a sad story as to why these engines are no longer included. Even though they were such pivotal characters in the Thomas and Friends franchise for so many years, they basically got kicked out of the Steam Team in favor of some new additions. So when it comes to buying Edward and Henry, you do have to go uh, go out and buy them individually like this. So I have Edward here. There's something really funny I want to show you guys with Edward that I'm sure a lot of other people have noticed. But anyway, here's Edward. Um, I bought Edward, I think I bought Edward off of Amazon, I think just for his list price of $7.99. So that's the thing. Um, I believe these push along engines share the same price tag with their adventures counterparts. The small engines, for example, like Percy here, Percy would sell for $4.99 in stores, Edward would sell for like $7.99, and then that Sodor Steamy's pack was normally $35, and there's also some four packs out there that I will show off a little bit later that sell for about $20. Bucks. So, Edward here, ooh, there is, yikes. This is painful to look at because Edward's one of my favorite characters. Again, I think one of the major, maybe the major weakness with the push-along engines is this 
uh, reduction in the different uh, different sizes of wheels. It just takes away a lot of the individuality and character that these engines could have. It is so weird looking. You go from such a large space between these wheels as if you know they're they're you know they have. It, it just seems cheap. It really seems cheap that they only put six wheels on these engines. Then they throw two giant wheels in such a tight space on the tenders. Edwards tender is plastic and has the buffers along the wrong way. It's really hard to like these toys, unfortunately, and that kills me to say because push along has potential, but there everything is going wrong for this brand and everything is working against it. When I bring in Adventures Edward, you can immediately see the size difference. Um, I guess Ed Adventures Edward had two different wheel sizes and you know I feel like those smaller wheels on the back tender there just work a lot better they just complement the size of that tender so much better um, it's hard to look at <laughs> push along Edward in the back there and say anything nice because he's just he's way too long you have this giant gap right here that wouldn't look too bad if it was painted white if the, the running board was painted white it wouldn't look too bad but and I'm not saying Adventures Edward is is any better, but at least if it was funny looking, it was at least within its proportions. That is not the case for uh, for Push Along Edward here. He unfortunately looks pretty terrible. Um, it's such a shame because, like I said, I think Push Along could have its moments. I think you know being able to join up on Trackmaster Track and even Wooden Railway Track is a huge thing. But who wants to put these on their track and who wants to display these engines when they look like this? So anyway, here's Henry. Um, I also got Henry off of Amazon and I've seen I've seen a lot of Edward uh, Edwards and Henry's in Target and and Walmart. Um, and I just have to say it's the kind of the, due to the state of the show and just people not knowing a lot about them that they probably don't want to pick them up. So. The big plus for Henry right off the bat is that he has an accurate tender. This was a major goof with the Adventures one is Henry had this wrong tender and it was it was just kind of hilarious like a major oversight there. So at least Henry has the correct looking tender. Um, the, there's not as big of a size difference between the Adventures and the Push Along for Henry. All of the same detailing there like the domes and everything it, that's still there. Um, it's just when I take this Adventures Henry away, it's just these wheels are uh, unfortunately they're just an eyesore. They just do not look right in my opinion. Maybe I'm just so used to the wooden railway trains where the wheels the wheels are you know really close like on the tender here and they're they're right up on it and um, I feel like they look nice. But man, these tenders are such a disappointment. The buffers are on backwards and they're all plastic. Um, it, it is such a shame. To. It's it's like why would why would you want to spend money on this when you're kind of you're getting half baked toys half finished toys and the fact that you know there was a major toy company out there who spent a lot of money to redesign these toys you know just a, a year and a half after this had already been redesigned um, it's such a shame and that's probably the biggest weakness obviously for the uh, what we're looking at is now the push along range but I like to call the portable die cast ranges not only have there been you know steady changes to the line every year since like 2014 2015 but the changes are arguably getting worse and then kids who come along and buy like adventures Henry for some reason you know they they have an outdated toy in a year and it keeps changing and it must be so confusing for kids and parents to come along and if, even if they wanted to collect these toys it's like why why even bother trying to collect the toys they're just going to change so henry i don't know he actually doesn't strike me as too bad and that's again we're not we're not looking at the wheels there we're looking above it doesn't strike me as too bad but here's a hilarious look at this <laughs> i remember seeing this posted on twitter this is hilarious to me these engines are supposed to be relatively the same size and there is a major size issue going on here between between edward and henry let me bring in james where does i feel like james yeah he's about the same size as edward and gordon okay so is it i guess it's just Henry that's wow is Edward Edward's taller than Gordon that's hilarious so yeah the sizing on these uh, on these engines is all off I mean very it's obvious it's painfully obvious that very little care 
and thought has been put into these toys. But um, you think about it, and like I said, I'm going to tell you guys the prices I paid for some of the, the later toys that I'm going to show off. And I think it will shock you at how much these have been discounted. So yes, the toys don't look great, but when they come, when it comes to like bargain bin toys and getting a good deal, well, if you're a new fan of Thomas and Friends and there's no other merchandise out there, these actually aren't too bad. And I'm not defending the toys saying that they should look this way, but there's kind of a reason why the toys do look this way. So... That's Edward and Henry. Um, we got a bunch more engines to look at right now. I think I'll do one more before I pause the video. Um, I think instead of having Victor and Kevin and even Harold in that Sodor Steamies pack, they should have thrown in Diesel. Because Diesel's a pretty major character in the show nowadays. And so I know, it, I know it's called Sodor Steamies for a reason, but they should have redesigned it or they should have just renamed it and included diesel so diesel's kind of chunky here um diesel's an interesting character in the push along range i saw him for a little bit when these first came out and then he's actually been kind of hard to find so i don't know if you would technically call him rare but he is a little bit hard to find let me bring out uh, man i got a bunch of different diesels back here Here's Push Along, or excuse me, uh, Adventures Diesels, and I apologize, I probably messed up the names a little bit. So, Push Along Diesel Shorter, and he's a lot boxier. I mean, I'd say this is square-like, and this is rectangular-like, but the face, wow, face is smaller. It is so interesting what they choose to change between the Adventures and the Push Along engines and what they choose not to. Honestly, this may shock some people. I don't think Push Along Diesel looks too bad. It's just hard to see because he's all black. Um, this rounded cab area and the way this is shaped, this is extremely reminiscent to like the model diesel that we saw in the early seasons of Thomas and Friends. So I actually think that looks pretty good. Face-wise, um, it's interesting. I think if I had it my way, we do the back of the push along diesel and the front area of the adventures diesel because there's something lacking between the two here. Um, <laughs> and we just, we don't, we, there could be a really nice version of diesel out there. I think the source is lying in a combination of these two. Unfortunately, we'll never get that. But I did want to show that off. And like I said, instead of including Harold or something like that, we should have included diesel. He just seems so tiny. His face is, I think, unproportionally small for some reason but anyway there's diesel still getting used to this kind of hook coupling thing i'm not the biggest fan of that um i'll throw in a random one here how about luke he's uh i guess victor and luke are the only two narrow gauge engines in this type of merchandise so far and we took a look at Victor earlier. So Luke, boy, <laughs> Luke has always, uh, he's had a tragic history of having terrible merchandise, and I think this one will go down in the books as well. Uh, right off the bat, this seem, he seems way too long. Uh, the big wheels really kill it here, because if I pull out Adventures Luke, nope. sorry about that. So Luke, yes, he was small, and his proportions weren't great, but he looked like a small, narrow-gauge engine, and he kind of just looked like a, a teeny tiny member of Sir Top Matt's Railway. This thing, this looks like four-wheel drive off-road Luke. I mean, it looks like he's, he's supposed to, like, go in and do some, some business or something like that. So Luke really suffers here. And I think the, the problem that we have is that these, these push-along engines all share the same basis, just different colors. So wheel, at least with the, the Adventures engines, like the, wheel, the lengths between the wheels and all that could be different, but we've gone to the kind of the stock standard size. Uh, Luke's boiler's way too big. His cap's too big. He's just way too big, and he's lost. Luke has a very unique shape. Could create for some really cool merchandise, in my opinion. Unfortunately, it's not being used that way. Um, but interesting, they gave him a, a, a red buffer beam. That's so interesting. But these toys, you know, as I've gone through and, you know, we're roughly halfway through this unboxing video, it, these toys, they just seem soulless. They seem, they just don't, they just don't seem interesting for some reason. And I, it's sad to say, but it's like, you, you look at this and you're like, this is not Luke. You know, there are far better toy companies out there and there are far better TV shows out there that get their products right. Why is Thomas and Friends suffering through this era where just all, there's something majorly wrong 
with all of these toys. Um, so Luke's a big miss in my opinion. I'll bring in, um, I'll bring in Whiff, how about? By the way, these toys are super easy to open. I think the type of plastic they use on them is, is, is uh, really cheap and then any glue that they use to hold them shut isn't that great either. But here is Whiff. I think Whiff and what we will look at later with Bell, these are two of the weirdest looking push along engines. I am so used to seeing four wheels on each side with these two and to have it drop down to three, it's it's really, really bad. Like at least, I mean, if I bring up James, it's like, oh yeah, well like on his adventures uh, model and all that, he had three wheels on each side and they've just kind of spaced them out. It is what it is. But Whiff here, this is very unnatural to me. I actually think Whiff's shape above the wheels uh, looks pretty good. Maybe his bunker's a little bit too big, but that's actually not too bad. And Whiff has always had really good faces on his merchandise, so that's not an issue there. It's just this wheel thing. Um, not too big of a fan there. And I guess, since we're on the subject, I'll bring in Bell. First off, look how big this packaging is. I'm gonna bring in Young Bao too. Young Bao is a big, big engine. You know, he's like the size of Gordon and stuff. I don't understand why Whiff and Bell got the same size packaging. That could have really saved on shelf space and obviously, you know, car cardboard and all that. So that's kind of a mystery, but honestly, nothing surprises me nowadays. So, uh, Bell and Whiff are the same size in the TV series. Their merchandise over the years, for the most part, has portrayed them as the same size. Here, they're looking like the same size as well. Um, geez. I mean, that's a, that's just a perfect example of how hard that, that new coupling system is. But anyway, there's Bell. Bell, uh, unfortunately, has had some of the worst merchandise in recent years. I don't think it helps that they take away a wheel on each side. Um, you know, original Take and Play Bell had, like, you know, posable water cannons, and she had all this cool stuff going on, and now it's just kind of come to this. Um, I think her and Whiff don't look too bad, all things considered, because you have, like, the tender engines, you know, with the, the, the buffers messed up and the plastic tenders and all that, but Bell could look a lot better as well. There's potential here, and honestly, this isn't... I, I'm going to um, bring in Take... Or, excuse me, Adventures Bell. We have some interesting changes here. Fel, uh, excuse me, the face looks the same. The water guns are still just kind of painted on. But look at this. So this is what we used to have. Um, I'm not really sure. Maybe you guys can let me know what you think. It's like, would you rather have three wheels crammed in there, or would you rather have them spread out to the side? Personally, even though this looks bad, still looks a little bit more natural versus you, I mean, you could, it, it's like a, a gap in the teeth. It's just really, really obvious. So anyway, um, I wanted to unbox these two at the same time because they're pretty much the same engine. They don't share the same mold entirely, but it's pretty darn close. So uh, there's potential with these two, but the thing that gets me that I can't get over is just that the three wheels on each side. That's really, really puzzling. So um, I'm going to take a break here. Give me one moment, guys. I'll be right back. I just showed them off a minute ago, so I might as well unbox them. But here is Young Bao, and I haven't really been showing off the packaging too much because honestly, it's not that interesting. But I do want to mention there is Shane on the back there. Um, I do have the majority of the 2019 releases for um, the Push Along range, but there are a couple of engines that I'm missing. Shane is one of them. I think I'm also missing like Flynn and Birdie, kind of some weird ones. But anyway, I wanted to. I'm kind of interested in Young Bao here. Um, many, many years ago. Ago. Well, not necessarily many years, but a while back, um, long story short, I had a custom Thomas Wooden Railway version of Young Bao made. At the time, only Adventures and the collectible railway merchandise lines existed. So um, I did have a collectible railway Young Bao in my possession that I tore up and took the face off of. And I tell you what, this face is almost identical to that. It's probably the same mold. So here we are, um, push along Young Bao. Um, face, his face is, I, it's interesting, in the TV series he seems to smile so much more, and this is more of like a stoic face, just not very interested, but that, uh, that Chinese, uh, dragon up top there is really, really well done. So, Young Bao here, 
Again, I'm, this whole wheel thing, everything, when I talk about these uh, push-along engines, if they are in fact good, I'm always disregarding the wheels because the wheels just kill it for me. Tender here, once again, backwards. Um, but we get a nice picture on the side there. And the top, not the, you know, most creative thing, but I guess it does the job. The main body here, um, I think this is really well done. This feels heavy. And so basically when I'm talking about that die cast metal, it's this front part here. And I think this green area is where the plastic begins and then it just drops down there. So it's kind of cheeky the way they do it. Like, yes, these are die cast metal, but you pick one up in your hand and you're like, something's really off about this. So this is kind of deja vu for me because I've seen Young Bao in the past. I don't have an adventures version of Young Bao. I did have a collectible railway version that I totally destroyed in order to make a custom from. All things considered, um, I think Young Bao really benefits from all the detail that he gets right here. It's so amazing. They can do all this detail on some engines, and then other engines don't get it at all. And it's just very, very puzzling. But anyway, um, I'd have to actually rank Young Bao up there, you know, with, with one of the better uh, push-along engines that we've taken a look at in this video. Because... He's not perfect, and the tender is is so weird. <laughs> it looks like it's just propped up on these two giant rolls. It's I, I, don't, I don't think I'll ever be able to get over that. But anyway, um, I do have a couple more individual engines to look at, but I want to bring out this right here. This is a four-pack. It's called the Hard at Work four-pack, and I'm going to adjust the camera so you guys can see it all. Uh, I've seen this at Target. And I actually got this on Amazon around Black Friday for $10, and this normally sells for $20. So I thought that was a really good deal. Um, it has a character here that I know nothing about. I believe her name is Esther, I want to say. I probably should have done some research before this video. But I remember this was one of the first push-along um, pieces of merchandise that I saw in stores. And fun fact, we're going to take a look at those guys just a little bit later. Um, Adventures and even Take and Play did something similar to this. Um, they do like these kind of mini four packs. So we get special versions of Thomas and Kevin, and then we get Jack and Esther just in normal form. So um, this four pack is so interesting. Like I said, normally sold for $20. And right around the holidays last year, it was dropped down to, it was dropped down a couple of times on Amazon. It was dropped down to like $17.99 and then $14.99 and then $12.99 and then $9.99. And I'm like, well, that's 50% off right there. And you're talking, uh, that's, that's $2.50 for each individual character that you see on screen there. So I don't think that's a bad deal. However, there are some problems <laughs> with these guys that we're going to talk about here. But let's just start with Thomas. So this is a special version of Thomas. I guess you would call this Muddy Thomas. Again, he's got these big steamroller wheels on him, which just throw the proportions all crazy. But I, the mud detailing here, and there have been muddy versions of Thomas in the past. I feel like the mud detailing is actually very well done. Um, I kind of like how it's applied. We got some on the top there. It looks like chocolate milk. Um, Thomas even has some mud on his face, which is really, really nice. I think back to the wooden railway version with the shocked surprise face. That would have been a really nice touch. But overall, for a special version of Thomas that I spent $2.50 on, this is not bad, actually. He still suffers from a squash cab and just kind of messed up proportions, though. So Kevin's here, and honestly, I have not seen any of the new Thomas and Friends episodes. Um, I'm guessing this has to do with, like, digs and discoveries or something. I don't even know if Kevin's involved in this, but basically we get a muddy version of Kevin. So very similar detailing on the side here. Um, as with normal Kevin, his upper crane here is pretty much useless, which is very infuriating. Um, I don't know why that is, but on the side here, we have kind of the uh, mirror version on the back. However, he's completely clean. He has, I guess, I'm looking at Jack and Esther in the background, so I guess road vehicles get these special types of wheels, whereas like a Thomas, if you can see the difference there, I would call these, maybe these guys, uh, they get uh, ridges in the wheels or something like that. Face-wise, it's a normal Kevin face just with a, a touch of mud. So, honestly, a cool, a cool special version. Here's what we're looking at right here. That's interesting. The uh, the black marks, I would call them maybe hazard stripes besides uh, Kevin's face, are thicker on the muddy version. 
but I can't see, there's no, like, I'm just looking for anything special between the two. And like I said, I haven't seen digs in Discovery, so I have no idea if this plays a role in that. But any, anyway, we got a muddy version of Thomas and a muddy version of Kevin. Jack here, <laughs> this is a horrible version of Jack. I can just tell that right away. However, that's impressive. I did not know he could do that. Um, I have a take and play Jack that I will get right now. There he is. So I have a take and play Jack that was sold in a four pack and it was also made into an adventures pack before that line was discontinued. So this is really, this is my only version of Jack in portable form. Um, it's from like 2015-ish, you see the big fat magnet on the back, but the front wise looks pretty good. Um, I think I had to use this in a Thomas Creator Collect uh, episode, which is why I have it. The big things I'm looking for is that the shovel or the bucket area is open. He has number 11 on the side. Um, okay, th so his bucket, this is the take and play version, doesn't go all the way back. But we got, you know, nice articulation. Face is really good as well. This version of Jack is way too wide and the face is way too small. Oh, that's so cringy to look at. That is so sad. It doesn't even look like a Thomas toy. It looks like a, a knockoff, something you'd find on the dark market or something. He has no number on the side, which I don't know, maybe in Digs and Discoveries or whatever episode this is based on, maybe he loses his number. I'm not buying that though. So this cab area, I'm used to pressing down and having the bucket go up with the wooden railway jack. Um, completely flat. Look how look how much bigger it is. The proportions. We talk about bad proportions with uh, the push along toys. This whole video, but Jack here takes it to a new level. I'm guessing he, it's wider just to fit on the track. But this version of Jack seems really wide as well. So I'm wondering if that was really necessary. And then another big issue. Jack has a has two back wheels that are big. We've gone to this stock standard one size fits all here, which is just not good. The face itself, yeah, I mean, looks, yeah, it's pretty much the same expression, but just look how, I don't know why they shrunk his face down. It looks really, really bad. And then it was hard to see earlier, but this bucket area is much smaller. Look at that. I don't know why you would shrink that down. I don't know what's the purpose of that. Um, Poor Jack. However, maybe the one advantage that this Jack has is that look at that articulation. That is much better, much, much better than uh, Take and Play Jack over here. But I would much rather have Take and Play Jack. Um, he just, this just looks like what he looks like in the model series of Thomas and Friends, in the CGI series. It looks very similar to like a wooden railway version. And this version of Jack looks like one of those. I'm thinking it was like a, it was a take along. Uh, yeah, take a long, or excuse me, take and play. I think they even did an adventures version. It was like a Lego set where you can mix and match the, the wheels and stuff, and it came with Byron and Percy, I want to say. That's what this looks like. So this version of Jack, probably one of the worst Thomas toys I've ever seen. This is pretty horrendous. Esther here, I want to say this is Esther. Yeah, oh, cool, I got it right. <laughs> okay, Esther, from what I understand, is from Digs and Discoveries or from, like, the new season of Thomas and Friends. Uh, it's, I should know more, but I don't really keep up on things anymore. It's just kind of depressing to, to see where the series has gone. This is interesting. Considering Jack had to be so wide, supposedly, to fit on the Trackmaster track, Esther is the exact opposite. Look how skinny she is. So what's the point of making Jack uselessly wide and making his shape all awkward when you're gonna keep Esther skinny like this? And I'm pretty sure on Esther's like render, her bucket is not in the middle here. It would be off to one side, kind of like Alfie. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm guessing Esther's proportions are very messed up and I'm imagining her like an Alfie type of excavator. So when I think of Alfie and when I see Esther here, I, I cringe very, very hard. Um, her bucket, considering Jack's bucket was so flexible, Esther here is useless. She can hit herself in the face, which isn't that great. But then, like, what's this? You can't even you can't even uh, raise it up. I mean, and this is this is Kevin levels of articulation over here, and it it, it hangs loosely. It feels like a limp dead arm or something like that it's it's kind of kind of freaky so wow this is man i mean these two 
granted, there's problems here, but for muddy versions, special versions of characters we already have, they weren't too bad. I mean, if, you know, we, we already know what a push-along Thomas looks like, and we already know what a push-along Kevin looks like. But these, like, new versions of these characters here, with Jack and Esther, these are really, really disappointing. Esther definitely has a, a unique color pattern, which is probably an advantage. But she just doesn't look like something from Thomas and Friends. And yes, while you could try to fit something in the bucket, it's not going anywhere. So, uh, wow. Okay, for $10, bucks, i am i don't regret the purchase. <laughs> but buyer beware, definitely. This is I think these dimensions are so messed up. Especially with Esther's crane arm being right in the way. You, you can't see her. Not, how are you supposed to see who she is? So, the fact that Jack is way too wide, it's like they, they need to take part of you know, the, the meat that makes up Jack here and add it to Esther, because Esther feels so skinny and, and so lightweight that just something's not right. So overall, I think this was the hard at work pack, I want to say. Yep. And it came with a Muddy Thomas, Muddy Kevin, Jack, and Esther for 10 bucks. Okay, I mean, you, you're definitely paying $2.50 for each toy. I guess maybe that's the best way to say that. It's kind of a dig at Mattel, but... If they don't make good toys, then it's I, I won't have anything good to say about them. So I do have another four-pack. I'm going to hold off on that, though. Let's bring in a character that actually never got a, an Adventures uh, model. This is Paxton. Paxton is one of my favorite uh, newer characters from the recent seasons of Thomas and Friends. It was a, surpr a surprise in Blue Mountain Mystery when he was included because I thought we had seen the last of them in Day of the Diesels. But here's Paxton. Paxton has been very hard to find. If I would... If I'm looking at, you know, all of these uh, push-along engines, and I had to rate them on, I guess, rareness, uh, Paxton would be one of them. And I actually have a couple more rare ones coming up as well. So, all things considered, it's hard to imagine what a um, an Adventures Paxton would look like. But I imagine, <laughs> I am guessing, he would look very similar to Diesel here. Let's just think of Diesel with a Paxton face and color scheme. And I don't think Paxton suffers too badly from his adventures uh, shape here is definitely not the best or excuse me his push along shape again sorry for the name switch up um definitely come in and maybe add some details here or there but all things considered i don't think paxton looks too terrible and it, it sucks that we have to kind of live in an age with thomas toys where it's like it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's like it, it was only a handful of years ago when we got really good Thomas toys. But anyway, I'm glad to have Paxton simply because he was kind of skipped over in the Adventures range. And I wanted to uh, get him for this push along video. And here's another engine that may surprise some people for its rarity. This is Rosie, but it's Red Rosie. Um, I got Paxton off of Amazon, I should say that, for probably base price. And I found Rosie at Walmart for $4.99, and I jumped at that because I had already seen Rosie um, appearing on shelves and then disappearing. So I think this new version of Rosie where she's red instead of pink is maybe kind of popular. Although I, it's like with, with no major network Thomas that it's airing on and DVDs and limited toys, it's like I don't know how anybody could become a fan of Thomas nowadays. But anyway, here's Red Rosie. Um, I definitely consider her to be one of the rarest um, just because I she kind of appears and then disappears and hard to find so Red Rosie's not looking too bad a stocky shape and big wheels but we still kind of have that classic Rosie design in a perfect world you'd love for a little bit more of that but this isn't actually terrible it's an interesting indent on the back there um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. It's not too bad, but yeah, it definitely catches your eye. And if you're a collector or anything like that, you may want to consider picking Red Rosie up because we don't have, I mean, we have the wood version and we have the push along version, but there's so far as of when I'm making this video, there's there's no red Trackmaster version of Rosie. And I, I, I'm pretty sure there's a play rail version, but you got to go overseas for that. So anyway, there's Red Rosie. Um... I love the, I actually am a big fan of Rosie changing colors. I'm so, I'm still used to her being pink, but I feel like it's, it's kind of working out. She's becoming her own character. So there's Rosie. Um, I'm going to do this other four pack that I alluded to earlier. This is the travel, uh, what is it? Travel with Thomas's friends four pack. 
This is also, you can also find this at like Target or Walmart. Basically, I see this four pack and the four pack we just looked at. And then there's like maybe a celebration pack with a Thomas, Annie, Clarabelle, maybe Sir Top and Hat's car, I think is in there. Oh no, it's like a birthday coach or something like that. But anyway, this is another four pack. It comes with special versions of uh, Percy and Victor, and then normal versions of Hong Mei and Ashima, which is what I was really after. So as I open this, um, I got this off of Amazon, I think for about 15 bucks. Um, it will probably drop in price considering a similar a similar four pack we just looked at with, with uh, Esther dropped to 10 bucks. Um, but this normally sells for 20 and you can get it. I've only seen it at Target. I haven't seen these four packs at Walmart, I don't believe. Um, but what I think is really cool here, kind of like the other pack, is that you get a mix. You get a mix of special characters with unique patterns and designs. And then you also get, you, it's a way to just kind of knock some characters off your list. So we got four engines here. We got Percy. I actually think this version of Percy is really cool. And honestly, it's fun to collect this type of merchandise if you're not too concerned about how the characters look and them being accurate, you know, representations of what they look like on the TV show. This is just a fun version. It's like Kangaroo Percy. Um, doesn't have a specific name on the bottom, but I guess I would call this Kangaroo or Australia Percy. Um, I guess this is from, like, Big World Big Adventures, but I thought... Again, with my limited knowledge, I thought Thomas was the only one going around the world. So who knows? This is probably just like a special version. I love, I absolutely love the kangaroo right on the cab there. That's really well done. It like kind of blends in, but then it also catches your eye. And then we got the kangaroo like, I don't know, crossing sign in the grass, like the Savannah grassland, yellow running board, brown wheels. I mean, this is, this is pretty cool. And then the, the Australian flag up top here to cap things off. This is a really nice version of Percy, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you get caught up in how you know unproportional these engines are, then of course the push along line is not gonna be for you. But when they come out with these special versions and they're just kind of fun to look at, um, it makes this line of merchandise much more enjoyable. So Percy, I'm guessing is the same size, yep. So it's like, yeah, normal Percy's cool, but Kangaroo Percy's also pretty awesome as well. We have, I'm guessing this is maybe like African Victor. I see some elephants on the side, maybe some like traditional um, African designs or like, you know, Savannah designs. This looks pretty well. It doesn't pop as nicely as the Percy one does, although like that cheetah print on the front is really, really nice. Um, I think there are supposed to be more of these like special packs with the different versions of engines coming out. Um, and I don't know, it's like, it's on one hand, it's cool, but if you're struggling to sell like a normal version of Victor, then what makes people want to go out and buy a special version of Victor, you know? So Victor, I, I ratted on him earlier because I don't think he looks very good. And I still hold by that, as you can see, just way too short and everything. But once again, if you were to just kind of, if this was something you were going to kind of set up on a table or something like that, it's a nice little version of Victor. And then he's still got a Steamworks logo. So probably the highlight here is the green wheels. That's kind of interesting. Maybe a throw. Oh, I guess, uh, I guess Victor used to be yellow, not green, my mistake. Um, but then that cheetah print front there, you can see they still, they still have a mold for the buffers. So that was a nice touch. Um, I was interested in this pack mostly because it was a nice way to get Hong Mei and Ashima. Um, I unboxed an Adventures version of Hong Mei. So don't know too much about Hong Mei. And I'm going to turn these guys around because they're taking my focus away. <laughs> so uh, this version, the push along version of Hong Mei, not as long. Looks to be a little bit taller though. And yes, you know, typical wheel size and all that. But look at the size of the cab, how much it has shrunk down. I'm kind of split. I don't really know whether to say that, say this is a, a, a you know, the push along version is a better version of Hong Mei or not. I really don't know. Cause I don't really, I know the adventures version is not all accurate to begin with. So it's like, it's, I, I can't really say for sure if it's any better, but you can definitely say that this version of Hong Mei is the uh, the push along version. Interesting though, look at the face. I thought the faces would be a different size, but they're actually like very, very similar. I think the, uh, the push along one is just a tiny bit bigger, but not by much. So Hong Mei, I have seen her sold individually. 
and I never had the desire to pick her up individually because I knew she existed in this pack. And like I've said throughout the course of this video, I think the uh, the tank engines don't suffer as much as the tender engines. So that gives me hope for Ashima here. Ashima's adventures model was always interesting. It was always very low to the ground. And remember, she's supposed to be, she's like a Nia type character where she's supposed to be longer and bigger than Thomas, but her adventures uh, version was not like that at all. So I would, I'll go out on a limb here and say that the push along version is actually, I think it's a little, does a little bit of a better job um, to kind of show Ashima's intricacies, uh, intricacies and her unique design. This one makes me feel like she's like a narrow gauge engine or something like that. She's so short. Push along wise here, we got three wheels on each side. A lot of missing detail per the usual. Um, but honestly, yeah, not too bad. I think, I mean, just that size wise, it's hard to tell from this angle, but there is a, there is a big size difference. Uh, oh, look at the, that's interesting. The faces are different. Very, very interesting. Fun fact there. So, yeah, I would say I pre actually prefer the push along um, version of Ashima there. But then again, to each their own. And honestly, I'm, I'm no expert. So here's what we got, guys, for the, the Travel with Thomas's Friends. It's so interesting. I just realized it's called Travel with Thomas's Friends. Thomas is not included. And you can say, oh, you know, Percy, Yashima, Victor, and Hong Mei are all of Thomas's friends. But that pack could have had a better name. They're definitely appealing to, you know, the Thomas crowd. You know, Thomas is the main thing. So... For, uh, for 15 bucks, I would definitely go for that if it was like 10 bucks. 15 bucks may be pushing it though. Um, let's bring in a very random character from the Trackmaster push along range. This is Bash. I know there is a version of Dash floating around out there, or there at least is supposed to be, but I was unable to find Dash. So we only have Bash here, and I've seen Bash all over the place, especially at Target. He always seems to be there for me. So, um,. Dash, or excuse me, right? It's Bash. It is Bash. Okay. So Bash, <laughs> um, he's got some height to him, which is really, really interesting. Let me see behind me here. I thought I had one of the logging locos. Wait, this is Dash, isn't it? Oh, it is Dash. Okay. Well, I have Adventures Dash and Push Along Bash. And yes, they're not the same engine, but size-wise, I think it's a good indication. So as you can uh, see, the cab area on the push-along engine is much bigger and a lot chunkier, I guess is the right way to, I wouldn't use, really use the word fat. Look how skinny, though. <laughs> Look how skinny that version of Dash is. But in order to fit on that Trackmaster track, um, that's what they had to do, I guess. So yeah, there's definitely been a size increase there. I mean, the logging locos have never been my favorite, so I don't want to trash on Bash just because. I mean, this isn't a terrible version, but again, super blocky in the back here. There could, I think, be more distinction between like the cab area and the bunker area. But uh, I think this adventure's engine is pretty par for the course. We're coming to the end of this video here, guys. I got only a couple more to uh, unbox here. I have found Salty to be a pretty hard character to find in the push-along range for some reason. Um, I never did get around to finding an adventure Salty, at least for an unboxing video, but I will get uh, there one day. Adventure Salty, or excuse me, push-along Salty here is not too terrible. I think he looks pretty nice. Uh, much better than like the Trackmaster or the Wood version where there was a very little distinction between the cab area and the rest. Face-wise, if it will focus, it's a pretty good face. I don't know. Um, when I say that he's rare and he's hard to find, I don't know. I don't really... Again, I, I, I struggle to see kids nowadays and especially parents going out and buying the toys for a show they know nothing about that is constantly changing. But it's interesting. It's like when these when these toys come in to store shelves um, in like a shipment or something, you can kind of tell which characters get picked first, which ones don't. And Salty seems to get picked uh, pretty frequently. And I think, like I just mentioned, he has a Trackmaster version and a Wood version, so he's still a very popular character. And I think Salty looks really nice, actually. And I've said it before, the tank engines, uh, the bigger wheels there aren't necessarily too bad, but they, you know, they, they kind of throw the proportionality of things off a little bit, but I actually think 
uh, push along salty here might be one of the best um, in this entire line, which isn't saying much because he doesn't have a whole lot of competition. But anyway, this is gonna be the final Trackmaster push along item that I'm going to unbox, and it's my absolute favorite. It's just your classic troublesome truck. So you're probably thinking, well, why is it your favorite? Well, the problem is with this new type of merchandise, there is very little rolling stock to go along with it. It's all about the engines. And then again, the engines are very hard to come by. So when you find rolling stock, you gotta, you gotta, you know, lap it up really quick. So this troublesome truck here, I remember seeing the promos for this. I thought it was pretty cool. Then I saw it in stores. And if you don't think I'm crazy, <laughs> I have a couple more here that I found in stores as well, which I'm keeping in the box because I think they are really, really awesome. If you've watched my wooden railway videos, you know that I love troublesome trucks. I think they're really, really cool. So uh, it's nice. We have the opportunity for a, a train to start forming here because the only thing we've looked at so far in the push along range um, are the engines and it's like that's cool and all it makes for a cool collection video But what about like if you ever wanted to do a series or anything? Well, unless you go out and buy Annie and Clarabelle or something like that and it was this way With the adventures engines as well. There was like no rolling stock and it was so frustrating To try to do anything so this troublesome truck here is actually very very wide and stocky you can actually that's so interesting those two white plastic things sticking up that's the face right there i think they could have easily hidden that so that's kind of weird uh this plastic coal piece comes out it's hollow um it's not super interesting but man this this what we'll call the truck bed is really really wide um I think all of my adventure stuff is going to be too, or excuse me, all my push along stuff is going to be too, too wide because they got to fit on the tracks. But let me see. I mean, okay, there's adventure's dart. Dart almost fits in there. That's pretty crazy. Um, maybe birdie. Nope, birdie's a little too long. I got Ace here. Ace will definitely fit because he has he has his own cargo car that he fits into. So, oh, I guess Ace won't fit. He's a little too long. Basically, the point I'm making is that this truck is really wide. In fact, it's a lot wider than I expected it to be. Let me bring in Thomas. Ooh, that's interesting. So, this isn't terrible, but since the proportions of these engines are so out of whack... This truck looks absolutely massive behind Thomas. I mean, it, it, it seems way too big. And I, I am definitely used to the era of Thomas toys where the engines were the biggest thing. And then like the rolling stock was always smaller, like in Wooden Railway, you know, the troublesome trucks with the exception of Hector, they were always kind of on the smaller side. So this isn't terrible. And I tell you what, this is also one of the heaviest, definitely I'd say arguably the heaviest push along item that I've looked at so far because there is a lot of metal on this. Um, let me bring in, just for comparison's sake, here's Edward with that. You would line up a couple of troublesome trucks and you got yourself a train, although we're missing a caboose and a brake van and all that. But uh, let me even bring in Rajiv, since I didn't really talk about him a whole lot in this video since I already unboxed him. So it's not terrible. But um, maybe I'm also used to, I got Adventure's Troublesome Trucks here as well. So look at how tiny these things are. There was no room for a face there at all. So maybe that's what I'm used to. This cargo <laughs> doesn't even fit. It's way too big. It looks more like a, a hat than anything else. And that Troublesome Truck, the Adventure's Troublesome Truck can fit in the Push Along Troublesome Truck, which is definitely interesting. So. I guess maybe I am used to, if I bring in this right here, I'm used to something like this. That's interesting. Uh, but yeah, I'm used to the trucks being really, really low in the Adventures line, and that's not the case here with this push along troublesome truck. However, I still really like this. Um, I would love to see in any form of merchandise, wood, push along Trackmaster minis. I just love to see a, a pack of troublesome trucks, all with different colors and different expressions. It's, I think that would really satisfy a lot of people. Underneath, oh, it does say troublesome truck. Well, they should make that a lot easier to read. It does say troublesome truck. Anyway, this is probably one of my favorite push along items just because I think it's 
It's really unique. And we didn't, uh, I know there was an Adventures Troublesome truck sold in that line of merchandise, but it never made its way to stores in the capacity that I've seen this one. So even if you're, if you're thinking about trying out the push along range, I would maybe say try picking up this guy, see what you think. Um, because I really like him. So give me one moment, guys. Um, we are all done with the unboxing part of this video, but I want to do kind of a finale farewell shot here. So give me one moment. I'm going to set that up. So here are all the engines that we took a look at in this video. We unboxed more than 30 Thomas & Friends Trackmaster push-along engines. There were a few good ones. There were mostly some bad ones, but overall it was very interesting to see kind of the next generation of Thomas toys and what we have to look forward to and also <laughs> what we have to look forward to on the same note. So this has been a lot of fun guys. I love doing these unboxing videos. Um, out of all the engines that we took a look at here, I'd say the ones that stand out to me in a good way, I was fairly impressed with Rebecca. Um, I feel like she's a good one. If maybe you're thinking about trying out this range of merchandise, get a new character that you don't have. Um, I also wasn't, you know, I didn't think Nia's uh, model was too bad as well. Um, Salty had a great one and I am a big fan of that troublesome truck back there like I already talked about. So those are the ones that come to mind in a good way. In a bad way, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to say most of the tender engines here just because of the plastic tenders. Um, I found Victor's model to be um, not the greatest. I found Kevin's lack of articulation with his crane arm there to be also very disappointing. Um, and really <laughs> the big, you know, kind of scratch on the head here is Harold. I don't really get that as well. Also, for the good category, I love this version of Percy. I just want to throw that in as well. So honestly, once again, I am split on this type of merchandise. On one hand, I think it is a, a big, big plus that these toys can not only connect with the Trackmaster range of merchandise, but they can also use the track. I think that was one of the biggest flaws with Adventures is that it had its own track system. And although there were plenty of track packs out and about when the range was around, not a lot of people were buying them. So I think it is a huge, huge plus that these engines can not only run on Trackmaster track, but I believe they can also run on the wooden railway track. Unfortunately, I'm still not a huge fan of this hook style of coupling in the front here. I think it looks really awkward. I think it draws way too much attention to itself. And while the adventurous couplings maybe not were not the prettiest either, there was a lot more functionality with those. You could swap the engines around. You could have them face each other. Now we're back to the days of all the engines have to face the same way. And if I wanted to put that troublesome truck up with Victor, for example, there's no way that truck can face the other way. Um, once again, however, I feel like the, uh, the quality has gone out with this new round of toys. It's such a shame because uh, the portable die-cast version of the Thomas & Friends merchandise over the past five years has been treated very unfairly. You guys used to have you know, some of the best looking toys in the brand and then the cabs were shrunk down and the, the awesome two-way magnets were removed and then the magnets were removed entirely for plastic couplers, which had, it, had its pros and cons. Um, and then now we're on to our fourth, basically, version of the portable diecast range in the past five years. And change is sometimes a good thing, but I don't think it's that good when it happens every single year. It's very hard for customers and fans of the show to come along and get interested in the toys when they're constantly changing. It's kind of like, why should I even bother to collect these toys? if there's you know something clearly going on behind the scenes that's not looking too good so anyway that's kind of my brief take on these push along engines for the most part i'd have to say i really don't like them and you're probably wondering well why did you spend all this money on these trains if you're not a big fan of them and part of the reason was just simple curiosity but i do like informing others so maybe you guys can use this information to decide if you want to pursue the Trackmaster push along range in your collection as well so that's going to do it for me, guys. I'm Thomas Wooden Railway. This has been a fun unboxing video. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you guys soon.